Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jasps tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to explore one of the new features of Jasp 0.15, released at the end of September 2021. I'm so excited. There's going to be several new videos on the, ch the channel going through some of the changes. The last video I went over the changes, um, just the overview through the release notes in Jasp 0.15. And so in this one and several other videos coming on the channel, we'll go through some of the um, changes. And in this video, what I wanted to do was talk about the just wonderful SPSS bending, breaking level of plot editing functionality added to Jasp since the last version. So what I want to do is combine a couple of new changes here. So we're going to we're going to do some plot editing here, but in the same vein, the descriptives module added a couple of new plots. So we might as well combine these two where we talk about the new plots and descriptives as well as being able to edit them. Oh, so let's jump in. So we're going to open up a, a data uh, library file here so everyone can follow along and we're going to open up the descriptives and I'm not going to open up the um, Jasp file, which is the wrapper that has the completed uh, analyses. I just want the data. So we're going to click on this. So just in case you were unaware that the difference there is this is the CSV file. This is the CSV file plus the output, um, which gets saved as a dot JSAP file. So that's JASP's native file um, compared to Jamovi's dot OMV file or SPSS's dot SAV file. This, on the other hand, although to be fair, JASP and Jamovi com combining their data and output into a single file does kind of be uh, that's going to be SPSS because you have to save your output as a .spv file. Um, but anyways, we're going to open the sleep here and we have extra group and ID. So we have two groups and extra and we're going to do some. Well. Well, we're going to do some new plots, so we're going to go to descriptive. And we're going to open that up and we're going to get um, extra and we're going to put it over into variables. And of course, by default, it's got the statistics already here. So we are going to skip this for now. Although I do really enjoy how Jasp has this broke, or yeah, Jasp has this broken up. But we're gonna go to plots actually, and we are going to create a dot plot because this is just a different kind of distribution plot. These are it's under basic plots here, um, and we are going to well, we're gonna make it bigger. This is another thing that I like about um, Jasp is we are, we can do it. Okay, so let's edit this image, shall we? Okay, so it opens up a new window and it takes up the whole screen, which I like here. So here's our, our dot plot, right? And here are our values on that dot plot. A, a kind of weird to use a dot plot for a mostly continuous variable, you know, but you know what? We're going to go with it. So we have, we have elements that we can change here. We can change the x axis and we can change the y axis. So let's do the x axis first. So by default, the variable name gets put here for the title. We don't want that. Um, we're going to do extra hour of sleep. And that's what it's going to be. And you can see, yeah, extra hours of sleep. And you can see that it automatically changes. So it's real time, uh, uh, real time changing, progressive changing. Um, and we can show the axis and the ticks. Okay, so we can specify the sequence. Um, so by the by doing specify sequence, doing this, having this one, and it is by default the radio button that's selected. It will choose it from the data. So it already knows that this is the data, and so it's going to choose it from there. Okay, or we can set it manually by using. Um, by using the data or something else that we want to specify. But from here, we can um, specify the sequence and we can change this if you want to. We can add in my uh, negative three here. And what it will do is it will add the negative three and it will change my ticks ac uh, across because it says so minus three to six is going to uh, every two minus three minus one, one, three and five All that. But there are some advanced options here. We can parse the title as an R expression, which will um, parse it so we can drag this into R. Um, and our limits are going to be based on the ticks or based on data. So we can base it on the data and it will change it to minus one to five. But of course, we don't want to do that because um, that's kind of gross, uh, especially if stuff falls outside of our x axis. We don't want that. Um, you can also set it manually to have um, these values here, these two values um, different from these two values. But I don't know why you'd want to do that. There's also a res reset defaults down here to take it into what Jasp thinks you should do. So there's that. Now, uh, a dot plot doesn't really need a y axis, but let's put a y axis on there just for the sake of argument because it's a it's a thing. Why not? Um, so it should put that on there if we we have show axis. But of course, I think a dot plot's not going to show you axis axes. So I don't know. We can based on text see if it adds it. No, it's not going to add it. OK, so there are some limitations to um, showing the title or versus showing the axis. So the dot plot does not have a y axis. And so this isn't going to work which is fine. Now, I, the last thing I will say here is save image as right here. This is awesome because you can just save this image as a high, high DPI image. I think it's 300 DPI saves it as a PNG file, although I think you can change it to a PDF EPS um, TIFF. Um, so if you want that, definitely want that 300 DPI, then save it as a TIFF. It's going to be a bigger file. Um, you can save it as a PowerPoint slide. This would be the slide itself. 
And then you can also change it as a scalable vector graphic in case you want to take this in and mess with it in like a, a Adobe Illustrator or some other vector graphic. PNG by default because this is going to be the best bang for your buck. Um, and it, I, would, I would hope that it gives you, uh, let's save it, as, save it as test. I would hope, I don't want to save it, I want to save it to my desktop. That um, if we were to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to, when you save it as a PNG, it saves it as a transparent background, which I think is awesome. Because then you can open this up in Photoshop and color these uh, dots or whatever element of the, the um, thing that you want. It's, it's, a, it's got a fully transparent background, which I think is pretty awesome. So that is um, the new uh, editor. But let's, let's, grab a, um, let's grab a distribution plot because I want to see what, yeah. So, okay. So let's do this. Let, let's go to this drop-down triangle and edit image. Okay, so it brings this up. This kind of looks gross. But let's change this to extra hours of sleep. Um, we're going to keep everything else the same. Let's go to Y axis and we're instead of counts. I do like frequency a little bit better. So changing that to frequency and let's actually give it five. So it'll shorten the stack just a little bit. Just so it doesn't look like it goes to the edge of the ticks. And of course, yeah, uh, one uh, our units here, a unit. I think that looks fine. I think that looks great. And here we have our histogram of the data. And of course, we can reset the defaults. We can go into advanced and our uh, title as an R expression if you want to open this later in R and we're going to do that here. It doesn't really change much, but underneath it does and then we can save the image as something. Now, if you save it as a TIFF, I believe it will save it as a white background, but let's go ahead and do that since we're here. Sorry for the edit there. Uh, <laughs> Jasp crashed. I think it crashed while trying to create the TIFF. So there might be some issues with um, file uh, saving. So just be aware of that. Another thing that we can create now is what's not included in, in plots, but out, out of here, we can create a stem and leaf plot, or here they call it stem and leaf table. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here, see what happens. Stem and leaf table, we have a minus zero. I love seeing minus zero, but of course the line represents the decimal point. So the decimal point is at the post. So we have a 0 0.6 or negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.2, 2.1. And of course, these numbers act in the reverse that anything above zero is going to act because these are this is a smaller number than this. So if you have negatives in your distribution, just remember that's, gonna, that's how it's going to work. I love it. I honestly do love it <laughs> that we get the uh, stem and leaf plot here. I think that's so fun um, for a teaching tool, for just another way to show uh, a distribution. And you, kinda can, kinda, you can kind of see that on its side, this plot kind of looks like this plot, the histogram and the stem and leaf. I think it looks great. I think it looks great. And if we put the density on the distribution plot here and we put the density curve on here, you can kind of see that, yeah, it's going to be a little skewed. You know, we've got whoop, boop. And then so here we have whoop, boop. So I think that's pretty awesome. I almost forgot. There is an additional thing that you can do in this is you can transpose descriptive tables. So it might be easier for you to read if you just have your statistics going across the top and your variables going down the side, as opposed to how it used to be where you had your statistics along the rows and your variables along the uh, the columns here, you can transpose this descriptive table and because this might be easier for you to read. Now, Jamovia has had this for a little while. Um, I'm so glad they added it to here because I actually find this a little bit easier to read than the other kinds of tables as I feel like it's too smooshed. Uh, at least this one gives you the ability to um, seal a number separately. The last thing um, for this is we can specify these bins. Um, bin width type, Sturges, Scott will give us a different bin. Um, so that is Scott, Joanne, or Doan will give us this kind. Friedman Diaconis, which looks very similar to the uh, Scott. Uh, by the way, Sturgis is your default, or we can change it to manual and specify 30 bins. And of course, there aren't 30 bins in this data set, but if we wanted to specify it, and you can see how, changing the amount of bins that we have, if we change this to 20, for example, changing the bins that we have, don't forget to click off your text um, to make sure that it incorporates the change, that you can see that the, the the, the more bins we have, the flatter this distribution. So if we only had five, say, you can see that this uh, distribution gets a little uh, five. This looks like four, but okay. Um, nope, this is four. <laughs> you can see that the um, shape of the curve does change. It depends on how many bins you want, really, and what your class intervals are going to be in each of these bins. So those are the descriptive changes, plus the editing of plots. Oh, it's so good. That's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this content, please consider subscribing for more new Jasp tutorials. Thanks for watching.